Uh, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing well. And in today's video, I'm going to take a look at the set of ball grip ratchet screwdrivers from Vessel. Now, there's been a number of video reviews of these already. I've only seen ones of individual screwdrivers, so I've picked up a complete set of them here to take a look at them. Uh, it comes in this little cardboard slip covering it over, and then when you remove that, uh, you can see the screwdrivers inside all laid out in a shadow foam kind of arrangement. So you could take these out and use these individually or you could store them as a complete lot in a tool drawer or something like that. So in the actual kit you have three Phillips screwdrivers down here, a Phillips 2x100, Phillips 2x150 and a Phillips 3x150. And then on the opposite side with the orange uh, rubber coatings on them you have two slotted screwdrivers 6x100 and 6x150. So slightly unusual configuration of the screwdrivers that you get in the kit. There's no Phillips 1s, uh, 2 and 3 uh, that you would normally see in a slotted 4 and a slotted 6 or something like that. Uh, so not quite sure why they've chosen this uh, configuration. Now I don't know if I was lucky when I picked this set up um, or if they lay these all out like this but these have all been set to the same configuration. The little dimple is facing forward straight out looking at you. So is the lock for the ratchet mechanism and that is actually locked at this moment in time and all the screwdrivers have been laid out like that which to me just looks like a really nice attention to detail but I've only got this one kit so I don't know if they all come like that or if I've just been lucky uh, with this arrangement here. So just have a look at the information on the back of the sleeve here you can see the part number for the set is at the top right hand there number 22005 EVA and it gives you the sizes of the screwdrivers that we've already been through. Uh, just out of interest here, it says this is Vessel Tools USA, so not Vessel from Japan. And the screwdrivers are actually made in Thailand. So just reposition here onto the other side of the back of the sleeve. It gives you a little picture of the screwdriver. Uh, the heads can be magnetized on it and they are made of hardened steel. It's the same steel that they use in their power bits. It says it has a slim shank cover over the screwdriver, which is for protection against short circuits. However, there is no VDE rating on these, so I'm not sure exactly what that is. I'll give the, one of the units a, an installation test at the end of the video just to see how it performs. But they say there's no VDE, so it's probably more for working on uh, cars with lower voltage DC systems rather than actual mains voltage or indeed uh, electric vehicles that can have quite high battery voltages. Um, it says the blade can be replaced. Um, I've not seen any of the blades for sale separately, uh, but it looks like they could be available perhaps in the future. And then it shows you the construction of the unit itself with a separate dumpy screwdriver unit with the ratchet mechanism in it and the blade there. And then just underneath here it tells you a little bit about the actual steel that's used in the screwdrivers. So we take a closer look at a couple of the screwdrivers here. Uh, these are the 100mm long ones. The 6mm slotted at the back here and this one at the front is the Phillips 2. The soft rubber mouldings on the blades and on the ball of the screwdriver they denote the type of screwdriver that is with the red here being for the Phillips heads and the orange there being for the slotted. Um, and you can see here this is the slimline tip arrangement that you've got on there. And if I compare that to this unit from Vera this is a Phillips 2 as well for direct comparison. Um, you can see here that the slimline section is about twice the length of that on the Vera unit so there shouldn't be any problems getting into deeply recessed screws uh, with this kind of screwdriver. And they're all very nice quality screwdrivers. Um, you can see here that they are very easy to control with one hand and you can turn the screwdriver blade with your fingers or you can use it as a ratchet with the ball there. Um, so if you have a screw here um, if you want to screw in, you can start initially with your fingers and you can screw it in. And then when it gets a bit too tight with the fingers, you can just move to using the ball ratchet mechanism. Same when you want to remove a screw, just flip the collar here, back to reverse the screwdriver, and then you can screw out using the ball ratchet mechanism. And then when you get it far enough, you can just take over with the fingers and carry on removing the screw. So quite flexible use, really. Uh, very controllable and the blade and the ball driver do split up 
So you then end up with a little ratcheting uh, dumpy screwdriver here really. Uh, and this head takes a standard quarter inch drive bit. So this is the original uh, 20 or sorry 220W uh, vessel screwdriver, ball grip screwdriver that I had. This is the bits that come with it and these will fit into it but only just and obviously you don't really have much of a dumpy style screwdriver um, so probably not overly usable but you could do a pinch. Um, it's more usable with these kind of bits uh, from Vera and these bits again from Vessel themselves, the smaller ones and they will fit directly in and then you have a little dumpy screwdriver uh, if you don't have one with you. Now there is a, a quite a strong metal wire clip at the tip of the socket here that holds the bits in place and it can make removing the bits quite problematic. Um, so sometimes as I am there you have to end up with a pair of pliers just to break and take it past that clip and then uh, well not far enough and they will come out relatively easy then. Um, but it is usable at a pinch if you don't have a dumpy screwdriver with you and you find you need one. Uh, they obviously break down very very easily and you can use them in that manner and they're all the same. The slotted one here, head comes off and exactly the same uh, quarter inch drive, hex drive for use with smaller bits should you want to. So that's the screwdrivers there. What I will do is just clear this all away and set up an insulation tester and we'll just see how good the insulation is on these items. Okay, so we're going to set up an insulation test on a couple of the screwdrivers. I'm going to be using the Metro MI3205. Um, I've got another camera actually pointing onto the display, so hopefully we'll be able to see that a little bit clearer. Um, and as we swing around, look at the actual test setup itself. As I said, I'm going to do two screwdrivers. I've got this screwdriver here that I've got a little copper band wrapped around where I believe to be the weak point in the insulation, which is the join between the ratchet mechanism and the actual blade. You can see here, this is all metal, this part here, as is the actual shaft inside the blade part here. It extends all the way from the tip, all the way up through to this point here and makes contact with the actual drive mechanism um, and uh, so I'm kind of thinking if you've got dirt kicking all around this piece here that joins in over time that would be a weak point for electricity to leak through there and up to that point there and onto your hand should you be using them on live voltages which I do not recommend um, so that's one test I'm going to do and then I've set another screwdriver up just with foil wrapped around the actual handle as though your hand would be on it and then I'll have a connection off from that to the crocodile clip there and we'll be able to test it in that manner as well and see if there's any difference between the results. Okay we're set up for our first test. The test is going to be a 5 kV step voltage test with five steps each at 1 kV being held for 30 seconds so that will give me a total test time of 2 minutes 30 I won't put the whole of the test on the screen, I'll just do the start of it here and then reconvene at the end of the test so you can see the results. So we'll press the go button and you can see we've got up to 1 kV and we're on uh, 1 tera ohm, 1.2 tera ohms. Okay, so we will let that run through. Uh, we'll take it up to the first 30 seconds so we see the next step voltage uh, and see what happens. Okay, so we've jumped up to 2 kV now and you see you've had a dip in the resistance reading there. Uh, if we go to this we can also get a graph output on this instrument as well um, and you can see the test ramped up fairly steady and then when the test voltage increased it dropped back down again to slowly rise up and there you see the next step that's coming. Okay coming towards the end of the test now with five seconds to go uh, 1.1 tera ohms 
There we go, there's a final reading. So yeah, 1.1 tera ohms. You can see on the screen there that uh, at the lower test voltages we were up at 3 tera ohms. And it dropped all the way down to 1.1 tera ohms as the test voltage increased. Uh, quick deco at the graph, and then you can see that kind of confirmed with the graph there. Uh, we will just take this away. And then we've got the other screwdriver set up here with the foil around the handle. So we'll Okay, so that's that all set up, and we're ready for another test. So we will go again and see what the results are this time. Okay, coming to the end of this test now, and you can see we were up at 1.1 tera ohms at 5 kV on the previous test. This one we're at 97.1, 97.3 giga ohms. So it follows the same pattern as the previous test. Um, but with much lower values, you can see at the 1 kV, the R1 there, 250 gig ohms against the circa 100 gig ohms for the R5, 5 kV. Um, so it looks like with the foil wrapped around the handle and the voltage stressed over a much wider area of the screwdriver, it does result in a lower resistance than when I did an actual point tester where I believed the weak point would be on the handle. Um, just flick him over to the graph so you can see that as well. Although what I will do is actually download all of these test results so I can put them up on a screen uh, from the software, which will be a bit better to look at. Uh, that's providing I save it, of course, which we must do. There we go. Okay, so that's that then. So I'll get this all cleared away, ready for summing up. So, a bit of a schoolboy error when we did this test uh, because I actually tested with two different screwdrivers the different test configurations that I had, and I really should have done it with the same screwdriver. Um, so, I've set the Phillips screwdriver up now and uh, we'll go for the same test again and we'll see what result we get. Okay, coming to the end of the test with the Phillips screwdriver again now. Uh, with the slotted we're about 97 gigs at 5 kV, uh, whereas you can see this one, uh, 101 gigs now. So not too much of a difference, uh, but whenever you do these kind of tests, really you should try and limit the variables, and I didn't do that first time around, but we've proved it anyway, so happy with that. Okay, so we'll get cleared up now, and we will go for the summary. Now this plot here are the test results from the tests on the Phillips 2 screwdriver. Um, you can see the very bottom line there is the voltage going up in 1 kV steps, all the way from 1 kV up to 5 kV. And then our top two lines are the insulation measurements recorded for the screwdriver. The orange line represents the insulation values when the foil is wrapped around the handle, and the blue line up above that shows the results from when the little copper braid was wrapped around a single point on the handle. So you can quite clearly see that when you've got the foil wrapped around the handle and you're stressing much more of the insulation of the screwdriver, you get a much lower resistance. Um, however, it does follow the exact same response as per when you've got the collar wrapped around the handle. You can see that when the voltage is initially applied and when the voltage steps up, you see a drop in the resistance value and then you get a little bit of a charge time as the insulation resistance increases until it kind of levels off after a few seconds and then sits there as the voltage is increased and that charging effect starts to drop and you also see that at 5 kV you've got a lower resistance overall than when you are at 1 kV. So quite an interesting set of results for me. Um, it does look quite nice and gives you a good idea of how the screwdriver is reacting to when a voltage is applied to it and as a, the stress increases on it. I'll just briefly show you this next plot and this time this is a comparison of the test with the foil around the handle of the Phillips 2 against the foil around the handle 
of the slotted six. And you can actually see that whilst I was a little bit concerned because I'd introduced the variable of using a different screwdriver between the two tests, in actual fact there's very little difference between them. Um, you can see certainly when uh, on the Philips 2 for some strange reason initially you had quite a spike uh, before it dropped down uh, but then uh, at 2 kV onwards it pretty much follows the curve uh, the same as the slotted 6. So yeah interesting set of test results for me from an electrical point of view. As I said screwdrivers are very very nice quality uh, I do like them uh, especially this Philips 3 here uh, that's going to be very useful if you've seen some of the other uh, tool loadouts I've got. You know, I make quite a lot of use of a Philips 3. Uh, so looking forward to see how I get on with that one. Uh, but for me, I certainly wouldn't be using these on, on any live voltages. These will only be once I've tested for dead. Um, so a little bit of a strange comment on the case there. Uh, I'm not quite sure what they're aiming at, seeing there's no... A specific VDE approval and maybe things are different in Japan but anyway that's the end of this video I uh, hope you found it useful and enjoyed it thanks very much for watching and I will see you again in the next one